Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So most global equity markets have actually taken up a little bit higher this morning. US 30, the SPX 500 both finished at all time record highs yesterday uh, as the market takes a delay in interest rate hikes as being a very positive um, factor in the global um, financial market right now. The big issue being is that if the music stops and there's no chairs left, what happens after that? So. Um, I could imagine you're going to continue to see the equity markets continue to creep up, but then it all comes down to earnings and how they're going to support the economy and they've got no interest rates left to cut because they won't hike them. Um, there's a lot of dangers in this particular strategy that I think people should be aware of. But what I've seen happen here before is uh, in this particular type of situation is that the markets will probably very likely to continue to grind up ever so slightly higher day in, day out until uh, you can't keep ignoring the economic data anymore and uh, not raising rates. There's a bit of a, a balance in that between not raising rates to you know, keep it, keep the economies going and then um, raising rates to give yourself a little bit of a, of a back foot because if the economic data keeps on coming out bad, they've already done a lot of the um, major stimulus measures that they can do and that could be a, an issue in the future. But nevertheless, uh, the market is taking bad news as good news uh, as uh, we're looking to have a delay in interest rate hikes in the US and the US 30 SPX 500 at record highs <laughs> as we stand. UK 100 bounce around 69.64. I guess a lot of news people are coming across to right now is uh, the EU referendum and uh, when that's going to happen for the UK, obviously sooner rather than later. I've already seen in the news today about Deutsche Bank already saying that they're potentially looking at relocating their headquarters from London, which employs 9,000 staff, back to Germany, uh, or they're considering opening up a working group to discuss the, the aspect. We saw a similar thing with, uh, with Scotland when they were talking about leaving the union with Standard Life saying they were going to have to move their headquarters to other places. So there's a lot of political guff right now, to be honest, but that's probably going to be adding a little bit of, um, <clears throat> a little bit of interest in the UK market and the sterling over the next couple of weeks and months, incidentally, you'll be hearing a lot of people talking about that. So Japan 225, soldiering on ever up higher. Interestingly, about 40% of the stocks on the, on the Nikkei are trading below their book value, uh, and they've got very low P ratios. So they, they make decent profits, but the valuations are still quite low. Obviously, historically, Japan 225, well behind a lot of its other peer groups. And uh, now we're tackling that 20,087 level Japan might still do more stimulus for the Japanese yen. They said they don't want to, but they will do. Um, and um, that, that lower Japanese yen will help to spur on the Japan 225. Uh, and I think a lot of a lot of um, a lot of further potential is possible in Japan 225 should the favorable conditions remain in play. And that is as long as the uh, Bank of Japan does not um, keeps the ace in the hole about Japanese yen stimulus or quantitative easing. That's going to help to uh, to curtail Japanese yen, so continue to weaken that, and uh, continue to make stock valuations in Asia quite attractive. Uh, so we're getting quite close to that multi-year high, around about 20,260, uh, and we're trying to break through potential resistance today, 20,087. Moving on to dollar yen, it's back up towards 120. It's actually at 119.94 right now. Doesn't really get that exciting until we get close to close to 121.87. So we'll park that one for now. West Texas crude um, suffered a bit yesterday as Saudi Arabia came out with their latest um, production reports, saying they almost had record exports of crude uh, so far this year. So oversupply, abundance of supply, that's depressing prices at the moment. Um, even as everything's spiraling out of control in Iraq and <coughs> Yemen and everything else. So US dollar obviously gaining a little bit of, uh, of, of momentum versus the sterling and the euro today, uh, overnight and today again. Uh, and that's helping to depress prices ever so slightly. We're getting a very interesting candle formation uh, right here with a series of lower highs. Uh, that could get ugly if we have a neckline break below 56.95. It's not it yet though. So gold's probably suffered a little bit after we had that increase in the dollar, uh, albeit it feels more like profit taking rather than anything significant. Bearing in mind there's no economic data that came out yesterday anyway. So 12.18 looks to be an interesting support level. Uh, for gold bugs out there, as uh, depending if you're bullish or bearish on this on this product, obviously um, that's going to be quite a strategic level to be aware of. So finishing up with euro dollar and GBP USD. So euro dollar actually coming off relatively harshly yesterday and again today, even though uh, uh, deal with Greece seems to be on the cards. Um, 
there are obviously some traders out there who are a little bit more cautious and um, they are selling the euro aggressively against the uh, the USD and um, there's actually a, a much more aggressive candle formation for yesterday and today we're already at the session lows and what sterling GB, uh, GBP USD is currently showing so if we do continue to see a selling pressure one spot 11 is the next potential support level and if we have a look at that same chart for um, for sterling obviously quite a negative day yesterday not quite so aggressive today we're bouncing between positive and negative just now uh, but it could do with a little bit of a breather it typically does this or it has done in this current leg up one spot 56 is arguably going to be the next potential support level for those looking for the next leg up so I come out data wise actually today is a good day for cable and UK 100 and your dollar in fact you've got a whole host of UK CPI and PPI data so it's all an RPI in fact so lots of inflation related data uh, and then later on we have um, the Eurozone CPI a ZEW business report that's going to be big it's a German uh, report but it's, it's big for the whole of the Eurozone because obviously Germany is such a big trade partner there and um, then later on again you've got uh, more um, PPI and you've got the Bank of England minutes oh my fact I'm looking at the wrong thing there let's go back onto my my daily my daily view which is the 19th uh, and uh, yeah so <coughs> NPC minutes actually tomorrow so we fast forward onto there you can see you've got uh, German PPI and the Bank of England NPC minutes and obviously crude oil inventories so as ever uh, keep your eye on the chart forum make insights part of your later going forward and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next okay.